Hello, this is Dave with Pressure Washing Guides. Wanted to show you my trailer setup. I've tried, I think this is my third or fourth different trailer. I keep expanding and getting larger as my company is growing. I'm still a one man band, but uh, I've been having great success as you can see. Personally, I invest almost all my money back into the company. I'm trying to grow to where I'm pretty much large scale commercial and then have a different sector of my residential is what my goal is for 2022. But I wanted to show you my trailer and what I actually use on a daily basis to give you kind of an idea of what you want to actually be purchasing. Um, some of this stuff, I'll try to put a Amazon link in the description so you can just click and buy it yourself. But I want to go over a little bit of everything on my trailer, why I have it. I'm not even going to talk about my actual vehicle where I have a ton of different fittings. I have pretty much a spare part for every uh, thing on the machines, minus my pressure washers. I don't have everything, but different fittings from the surface cleaners to the wands to the different connections. You want to have all spare. You don't want to be on a job site and then next thing you know, you're out three, 400 bucks and it looks terrible to a customer because you got to come back another day. So make sure you have all this stuff. I highly recommend now if you're up north, and you know winter uh, months stuff like that if you don't have a place to keep it indoor then yes you probably want to do an enclosed trailer uh they are a little bit harder to work out of but if you properly set them up they're not so bad i'm here in southwest florida so i like the open trailer concept it gives me a uh, nice signing i mean an enclosed trailer you could wrap but i found great use of being able to work off this very nicely and you don't even know how many times i've been working a job and landed another job because they came up and said wow heck of a rig like i don't look like a company that is a fly by the night so the value that i build they trust me to send their friends family and neighbors walking by grab a business card so, so as you see here i have a little big guy whisper washer 24 inch i was going to go with the 28 but they were out of stock at the time i was buying it i love this guy now the one thing to keep in mind when you are buying uh, surface cleaners is every one gallon per minute is four inches of surface cleaner so with my Honda IGX 800 that I purchased recently, uh, that's eight gallons, eight and a half gallons per minute. So that same factor, the biggest pressure uh, surface cleaner I should be using would be a 32 inch. This is only a 24. So it helps prevent leave lines and it makes it where I can walk a little bit faster. If I went very big with it, I'd be struggling. This is what I originally started with, which is the a four gallon, uh, it's actually three and a half gallon, Honda GX 270. This is a great starting unit. I think I picked it up for about $1,200. This is my backup unit. Thankfully, I've had to yet to use this thing, but it's something it's nice to have a backup unit. And this is a great starting unit. Don't ever buy anything less than three and a half gallons. You're kind of wasting your time. Now, this would struggle running a 24 inch because that same factor, this thing should only be running. I think I ran a 20 inch and I had to walk very slow so you could use a bigger surface cleaner but the problem is is you're walking like a dang turtle you don't want to mess with that buy the right size like a good 16 inch 15 inch surface cleaner for this would be perfect now continuing around i have a 225 gallon uh, buffer tank now a big buffer tank is not 100 percent necessary all the time the reason i have it though is i do a lot of houses where they're on well water so when they're on well water my big pressure washer needs eight or yeah, it needs eight and a half gallons of water per minute. And what I actually use is I use a, I don't know if I have it handy right here at the moment, but I use something that tracks how much water per minute their spigot's putting out. And a lot of those houses are only putting out four gallons per minute, five gallons per minute. Now city water will put out the correct amount, but when you need eight and a half gallons a minute and you're only getting four gallons from the water spigot, that's a problem. So what I do is I spend my, like while I'm doing my walk around of the house, getting my equipment set up, I'm filling up my big tank. So then um, it's putting in the tank for, you know, say four gallons per minute and I'm pulling out eight gallons. So I, you know, I might wait till it's about halfway full before even starting the pressure wash. So there's things that, and that's why I use a big tank. Now, if you're only using a little three and a half gallon pressure washer, you could hook right up to their water spigot and a buffer tank is still nice, but you could have a smaller one. Basically, when you're not squeezing the trigger, it's building pressure. If you let that go for a minute, I th it might even be less, without actually squeezing the trigger, you'll blow the motor. Like you're, you're heating up water and it's trapped in there. So with this system, I'll show you when I get on the other side, I have a discharge line that goes back to the tank. So when I'm off the trigger, it's pushing the water back into the tank. So one, I'm not wasting the water, but two, I'm releasing the pressure. 
still, even with me doing that, I try to never let it go a minute without me hitting the pressure. I have a ball valve. You know, if I got to shut it off for a minute to hurry up, connect my surface cleaner and then turn the ball valve off, that's fine. But you don't want to just let it sit there forever. If a guest is going to, or a customer is going to talk to me, I'll either shoot the water off in the distance or if I know it's, you know, some people like to chat like myself, as you could tell, uh, I'll actually shut the pressure washer off, talk to them and be like, okay, fire it back up. So you don't want to let pressure build up. That's why you have the big tank right here. I have two different types of uh, neutralizer. Uh, right now, I only have the Agent Halt. This is great to put on plants after you're done um, actually cleaning them. Agent Halt will help neutralize the bleach that you might accidentally have got on the plants. So very nice. I also use something called Plant Wash, uh, which is, I think, even better. And then in your toolbox, there's some couple of things that you want to keep in here. You want to be able to have a waterproof suit of some sort, even though like my clothing that I have that I got through FinPrint, um, that is great. It's you know bleach resistant, waterproof, the whole nine yards. But if it's downpouring out, I like to actually be fully covered. Um, earmuffs, earmuffs are very important. Now, three gallon machine, you're probably not going to need them. But if I use my eight gallon machine with a turbo nozzle, it is so loud. It sounds like a damn aircraft going off next to me. So I like to have that with me. Obviously you're going to have your glasses. I like to have a nice hat because it's super sunny here in Florida. Also helps if, you know, if I'm doing a pull cage or something like that, I'm spraying solution above me. It's not coming right down on my head. Um, and then other than that, you just want to have all of your miscellaneous stuff, all of your pipe wrenches, your other nozzles. Very important. A lot of people don't think about it. But the day that you need it, you're going to make sure you actually have it. Have a uh, fire extinguisher that is made for all chemicals. Very important to have. Um, something very nice is you see the banner I have here. Uh, this custom build trailer. I actually purchased this off someone that had a previous pressure washing company. So it actually worked out great. But you could easily, once you have the trailer build the design. I mean, as you see, it's just four posts coming up with the top uh, rack. This is just made out of aluminum, so it's nicer. But this uh, big sign, not only is it good advertising going down the road, but it makes you look a lot more professional as a whole. Um, so highly recommend this. Uh, I, uh, I'll have to put down in the description where I got these. I can't think exactly offhand. Great company though. It takes about, I think about a month to get to me, but this banner was only like 40 bucks. And then I had big banners on my back tailgate. Uh, and when you get banners on stuff, make sure you get the wind flaps. The big thing, even though I had wind flaps on the back out and we'll get to it. Um, still, that's a lot of air blowing through, and I have zip ties. I was double zip tying every grommet, and still I, I was ripping those off. So you don't want to get on the road and have those pop off. Uh, you always want to keep just little pump-up sprayers. This is what I use to do all my pull cages, real simple. I have a full soft wash system, uh, but it sprays so much where this I can be very precise. I'll put a link below. Buy these off Amazon. I've tried now five different uh, pump-up sprayers from backpack sprayers to all kinds of different pump-up sprayers. These are like 14 bucks. They're bleach. They're made for bleach. So the O-rings uh, stuff, you know, it's not going to go bad. In different models, they make a metal gun that eventually rusts out or the O-rings mess up. These are very nice. It has a little swivel tip. Very great. I always keep two of those. I keep a couple of those. So I have one for my mix to do like uh, pull cages and my other one that I use for the plant wash, whether it's plant wash or agent hole. Um, as you see with my setup here, now I try to have everything wired in. So um, this is the main hose going from uh, my actual reel, which we'll get onto the other side. But I just open this up, pop the hose in, and that's going to feed water into here. Now, if you don't have a big unit or a buffer tank, you would just obviously connect it straight to your pressure washer. I have one hose that's going. Uh, this is one of the, the pressure release coming from my actual pressure washer itself. So anytime I'm off the trigger, it's squeezing and it's pushing the water back in. This other one going in here, it's running to my proportioner for my soft wash system. All I did was drill a couple holes in here. And the big thing with when you run PVC down in, I have it going the whole way to the bottom. What you want to do is you want to angle the bottom of the pipe. If you don't, it will actually suction and you won't be able to get water through. With it angled, 
it'll let water still get through and it go the whole way to the bottom of the tank. Now back here, I just upgraded to this. It's 110 gallon. Um, this is where I keep all my chlorine, my bleach. Uh, one thing about chlorine bleach, one, you should not be buying it from Walmart and stuff like that. So yes, if you're a fly-by-night company, you can do that. Pinch a penny, typically, at least here in Florida, I've heard some crazy prices up north. Pinch a penny in Florida. Uh, once you buy bulk, like I think 50 gallons or more, typically what I always buy, um, I think I got it down to $1.84. You just got to build a relationship with the actual, they're all individually owned. So you talk to, find out who the owner is, and you go, hey, do you have a bulk deal? Now, I always go to a pinch of penny. Uh, there's four around me. Only two of them have a place where I could pull around and they have the setup where I can just fill this bad boy up. I used to. I didn't know that was a thing in the beginning. And I was filling up five-gallon jugs and then dumping them in there, running back in the store. Waste of time and a nightmare. So these are the type of questions you ask. Now, eventually, if you have one in your area, I believe it's called SCP. I'll put that in my description. It's a pull chlorine manufacturer. Uh, or it's like, uh, just a manufacturer of some sort, uh, they specialize in all sorts of different things. I highly recommend those. I get it for, I believe a dollar 34, dollar 24 a gallon, much, much cheaper. The thing is, is you have to have a EIN, like you have to have an LLC. You have to be an actual company, register an account with them. Takes like a week or two. Then you get set up in the system downside. They're only open Monday through Friday to like four o'clock. So I do a lot of my roof jobs on the weekend. So I know I have to fill this up if I want those discounted prices. Otherwise, I go to Pinch Penny. And that's because Pinch a Penny and those type of chlorine, that's 12.5% SH, where bleach in like Walmart is 6%. So much, much better to buy in bulk than to have a bigger tank. Uh, I got away with a while uh, having a 35-gallon tank and a 25-gallon tank. It was just a pain in the ass because like this is my line. If I'm doing it by myself and I'm on the roof and I run out of my 35-gallon tank, I'd have to get down, pick this up, put it in the other tank. Seems minor, and in the beginning, you might not have to spend the money if you can get them cheaper. But I picked this um, up off Facebook Marketplace for $110, or no, sorry, it's a 110-gallon tank I got for $200 used. Not terrible. I tried to find them online. They, they look to be about $300 by the time you factor shipping, so I didn't mind saving a little bit. Uh, on the back, I have tons of different garden hoses. You want, like I said, when you get to a job site, you want to like immediately, I have um, a T set up. So I hook up to the garden hose and then I tee off one main line to my big tank. And then I hook up all my garden hoses. This is what allows me, I'm not using the same garden hose. And these are the flexible hoses, which are great. I use them as I'm walking around the place to make sure all the plants are watered. Moving around to the back. I have my new signs coming in here in about two weeks, but I will show you. We all make mistakes. As you see, my sign here is mangled. What I decided to do, one, it, this is a five foot by five foot, and uh, I had one full piece. And like I said, there was all kind of issues because there's so much wind coming through that it was snapping uh, my zip ties all the time. Even double zip tied, three grommets on each side, three on the top. More than should ever be needed. And so, like, on there, even with the wind flaps, it would, it would start ripping them. And they were uh, heavy-grade zip ties. They weren't cheap zip ties. So what I did this time is I'm going to just be able to have the banner on this side and a separate banner here, allowing wind to pass through the middle. And they will still have wind flaps. So just having the little extra wind be able to get through is great but as you see i mangled this one because i was half asleep doing a job at 4 a.m uh left my gate down drove a block down the road and i was like oh my god i hear this loud noise and my i i knew exactly what i did so it completely shredded my whole thing dumb mistake it happens uh living you learn on this side so one other thing this is the surface cleaner i originally started with which is a North Star. These are these are pretty good. Uh, with the eight and a half gallon machine, it wants to lift it off the damn ground, and that's only a one bar, two nozzle machine. Uh, great starting one. I think there's some other better ones than that. I prefer now that I've I've used one that actually has wheels. I I love the wheels part. It just makes it easier to roll around and different things. You got your ladder rack. 
one of the best ladders to use is the little giant. Uh, it's not going to get you on, you know, three story roofs, but I can get, I pretty much, I've got on most, uh, like every one story roof. And then I use a separate ladder to get on a two story if I do a two story roof, but they're so nice and flexible to be able to move in different lengths and, and sizes. So I highly recommend it. Now, uh, I built on top here since I have like, I put down basically, uh, like a mesh, like a heavy wire mesh. And that's where I store all my brooms, uh, my brushes, my different, uh, extendable stuff here. Like I have all kind of different expandable nozzles and everything large that I don't want just laying around on the ground. I put up there, saves lots of space to be able to do that. Nothing bounces out. Like I said, I'm in Florida, so you don't want to put anything expensive up there. Nothing like, I don't care that if it gets rain on it, essentially. Looking forward here. So Delavon, I believe that's how you pronounce it. There's seven gallon, 100 PSI. Uh, pressure washing pumps. I have, as you see, I have one there and another one right here. I have two set up just in case one breaks. I always have another one. I don't want to ever lose a five, $600 job because I don't have a backup pump. So very important to have the pump. Um, I'll put that down in the description. I purchased that off Amazon. They're about 300 bucks. You can get cheaper ones, uh, five and a half gallon. I've, I've used pretty much every single 12 volt pump brand there is. Um, and I think these are my favorites, a little bit more money, much more reliable, more pressure, more gallons per minute. I'm able to uh, finish a job, say 30 minutes faster, you know, that's 30 minutes faster. I work at $200 an hour, pretty much most of the time. That's an extra hundred dollars I can make in a day because I'm able to do jobs faster. So it's an upfront cost in the beginning. Yes. You might start with something cheaper. I wouldn't start with anything less than five gallons per minute for your soft wash pump, or you're going to be up there all day and waste time. Um, looking at the batteries I use, and I got these also on Amazon, Renology or whatever, 12 volt. These are marine batteries. They're not cheap. They're about 250 a piece. You could easily start with one and, um, just make sure you charge it all the time. Sometimes I'm lazy and I forget. So that's why I have two, uh, because you could pretty much keep them charged at all times. What I plan on making a video and doing here next week or so, uh, I'm going to show you how to actually connect this to your trailer hitch, uh, plug where as you're driving down the road, it's completely charging your batteries as well. So you don't gotta worry about it when you're at home. I should have done that a while ago, but I've, I've got a little lazy. But with the soft wash pump, I run everything through there. And then all I gotta do is connect my different cables. Turns out you're using personal protection. Using a good mask is very important when you're doing that. I have multiple different masks. Make sure you're changing your filters. You do not wanna be breathing in chlorine all the time. It will do serious damage. Very important. That's why I have the glasses on the other side. Uh, some other things is just making sure I like these because they're like expandable. I put those, like if I'm going to park on a road like I am right now, I'm going to put them on all the corners of my trailer. You just don't want to have liability. Someone runs into you that you didn't have these out. You know, it doesn't look good for insurance. So these are very cheap. Also found those on Amazon. Pretty dang, excuse me, pretty dang cheap. Now going over to my reels, I got three reels here. So my first reel, I got 250 feet of half inch uh, for my soft wash. Now, I have two different soft wash setups. So if I'm trying to shoot a big roof, I have my J-Rod with my homemade uh, system here. Uh, I'm going to redo this one with something different, but I just got a ball valve that shot it on and off, and it connects with a stainless steel uh, half inch nipple. So this is a great make your own. Uh, the J rod itself is about 50, 60 bucks on Amazon. Make sure you buy the proper one uh, for the gallons per minute your system puts out as far as the soft wash. Very important, but all these different fittings, you could buy this whole setup, make it at Home Depot. Uh, minus the J rod, you can make the whole setup for 20, 30 bucks. Not a bad deal. Uh, I highly recommend spending the little extra and going with this. Now, I couldn't find it on Amazon. I think it was through the Power Wash store. The Amazon one has a blue one. The problem with the blue one is it's not stainless steel interior parts. So it rusts out really bad. Now, when I say that, I've messed up this one. That's my own fault. Uh, I did not, um, a couple times, I did not flush my system out after using my pump. 
So especially with a proportioner, it's very easy. You turn off the bleach and you hold the trigger until water is coming out. Super easy. I'm lazy and don't do that. But now I've kind of messed this one up. It still works good, but it doesn't shoot as far as it used to. I like these guns. Nice, it has perfect weight, but you can control the, like the difference in pulling the trigger will turn it from a spray pattern to a missile. So where the J-Rod, you have to keep taking the tip off and moving it, or even with, um, they make variable nozzles. If you're up on the roof, you have to keep like pulling it back, turning the knot. This, it's just all different on how hard you pull the trigger. These are amazing. As long as you take care of them, they will last forever. I'm, I'm just going to take it apart, clean it out, and it'll be back to normal. These run about 100 bucks, 110 bucks. Probably the best investment. Because you figure by the time you spend 30 bucks building one and 50 for a J Rod, you're at 80. For an extra 30 bucks, you get one that's way better. Highly recommend. So, uh, one thing I forgot over here is you have, let me close this, you have the proportioner. Now, with the proportioner, you have one line that's running to your water tank, you have one r line running to your soap tank, and another one running to the chlorine. So, the water one, so as you see here, there's a couple different variants to uh, uh, the valve system you can use, the shutoff proportioners. So uh, Amazon sells both of these. They have a cheap version and then these ones. These ones that have the little dial of the strength and everything like that are about $100 a piece uh, on Amazon. They have a cheaper version for $30, but the problem with the $30 one is they break real easy at these. These have a spindle right here that make it very hard to break these and have last longer. If you're in a pinch though, if you look at this one, this is not a dial system. This is a regular shutoff valve, but it's a more heavy duty one. I think I paid $10 for this because it's a little heavier duty, but realistically in spend it, instead of spending $100, $200, $100 a piece, I could have bought three of these. The only difference with these that you have to keep in mind is like, so that's off, that's on, that's 100%. So say this is bleach at 12.5%. If I go halfway, that's 6%. And I go a little bit more, that's 3%. The difference is, is I don't see the numbers for to be able to tell the percentage. But if you know what you're doing with playing with these, you can get away with using three of these make this thing for, I mean, these other fittings cost money, but you can make the whole setup for $50, $60 instead of having three of these and making this same setup, the one, the same ones you buy offline for three, $400. So it's a nice cheap route to do. I highly recommend, it has been a game changer since I went from batch, mix, batch mixing to proportioner. World of difference. Batch mixing is all right, but what happens when you're doing a roof wash and a house wash? The roof wash, I might be at a 4% SH. The, the house, I only want 1%. So what do you do with the extra mix you had? There's so many different things you can go wrong. How many times you have to get off a roof? You can't buy as much bulk chlorine. Like build this damn thing for $60, $70 and set it up correctly. If you're going to treat this like a business, do it the correct way. Highly recommend. I'll make separate videos on how to set up wire in the soft wash pumps, how to build the proportioner valve. I'll make videos on all that, but I just wanted to show you what my trailer is, how I do everything. So like I said, I got three different reels. All of them are Titan reels. Uh, I believe this one is actually the real deal. Shout out. Thank you. Love the reel. It's actually been doing great. The only uh, downside to this reel, uh, and I wanted to follow up if you look here, is it's starting to rust here. Now, this is my chemical one. And like I said, I have been lazy a couple of times and haven't cleaned it out but I have been getting a little damage there. So I have a feeling down the road, I might actually have to replace this little part. Not a big deal though. It hasn't affected any of my, any of my pressure or anything like that. And then my other two reels here. Uh, so I have one from a high pressure, 200 feet of high pressure. They sell this hose on Amazon. It's a two wire, like 4,000 PSI, complete garbage. It's very strong, will last you a while. But if you look here, see how it's starting to turn black? It's starting to go bad. And it's very tough to move around. Look on, um, I think, Clean Clean Right, uh, Clean Right, I believe, is the website. They have ones that are much better for the same price. It takes a little bit longer to get in. Highly recommend going a different direction. And then this is the best uh, valve you could buy here. 
<clears throat> I think Amazon sells them. They're about 60 bucks. This is so the reason I do it this way is like I said, I will shut it off to be able to plug into my surface cleaner and then open it back up. You want to put the nipple on the outside. So when I'm rinsing, like I, instead of using a wand to rinse off a driveway after I'm done, I use this in it by shutting off a little bit of the pressure. It creates more of a stream. It's amazing. So much since I switched to that, I, I don't even use my wand unless I'm actually edging in stuff. I just use the surface cleaner and then that to rinse off. Amazing. But these things are like $60, $70. Uh, so they are a little bit pricey, but they're worth it in the long run. Finally is the garden hose. Now the problem with the garden hose that you're going to find on a lot of different places is a lot of these outlets shrink down to a half inch or five eighths. So even my three and a half gallon machine says that it should have at least four gallons per minute at all times. And the garden hose should be three quarter, not five eighths. So how are you getting five eighths if you're running through and it's shrinking it through? So I've heard a lot of people say that they haven't had any issues and it's worked out fine for them. I just don't like that. So what I ended up doing in the beginning is I used this strictly um, as something to hold my garden hose reel. And then I would pull it off and connect it to, directly to my old pressure washer and then connect to the house. And now I don't care if it shrinks a little bit for the fact that this line is ran to my big tank. So I'm no longer pulling directly from the house and have to worry about the restriction because it's going to my big tank. And then from my big tank here, if you zoom in real quick here, you can see from my big tank, it's a two inch bulkhead. Sorry, I got shit in the way. Two inch bulkhead that reduces down to one inch. I have a shutoff valve and this is a one inch, not only a one inch line, make sure it's the non-collapsible line that has the wire in here. So instead of a three quarter line, I'm doing a one inch coming into my eight and a half gallon machine. That's how you wanna actually do it. And as you see, here's my pressure relief valve. And this is where this is going from here back to my tank. Now you could just use a little line coming off here and let the water spray on the ground, but why waste the water? Um, because if the house is only, like I said, the house is only giving me four gallons per minute, but my machine's pulling eight. I, if I'm wasting all that extra water, I might have to turn it off and wait five, 10 minutes for it to fill back up if they don't have good water pressure. So three reels, I like to put them all on the side, makes it nice and easy. Uh, and look how professional this looks. I always, when I pull up to someone's house, I make sure that uh, I put the house on the passenger side so I could just undo the, the reels, run them there. When I'm done, reel them up and you're done. But like, it's like just setting up my reels properly. They're, they're expensive. They're not cheap. Uh, I bought these used for, I think three, 400 bucks a piece. Um, you buy them new. I think the real deal when I bought that, it was uh 500, 550. So they're, they're, expensive things to buy and i understand you're not gonna be able to get them in the beginning uh my old trailer i bought ones from northern toll that were regular reels that were i want to say they were 100 bucks good starting one but they're not built out of stainless steel they're ba uh, built out of just regular steel so for the chlorine one it eats in the way for the pressure one eventually uh, as you step up your pressure it'll blow out the seals on them so it's good to start with that but as you start to get money unless you desperately need uh the money to pay bills and stuff, start investing back in your company. You shouldn't be going full time in pressure washing unless you like, like you don't want to have to rely on every dollar of pressure washing until your company is big enough. In the very beginning, like I, I still, even though I'm doing probably 10 to 15 jobs of pressure washing a week, I still have a full time job. I'm working 17 hour days. I do it in the morning before work, go to there. And then on the weekends, I'll book four or five jobs. Next year, I plan on actually going full time in the pressure washing, but until I'm able to book 30, 40, 50 jobs, I don't want to solely rely on this. So a lot of the extra money I make from pressure washing, I buy all the equipment. I feel like now I'm pretty much done with buying equipment. So I tell myself every time I spend another thousand dollars, like I just ordered a bunch of the F9 products. Um, so yes, just invest back in your, uh, actually into your stuff. So in the beginning, to give you an idea, using my four and a half gallon, my, my smaller surface cleaner, uh, a driveway, you know, might take me three, four hours to get perfectly clean. Where now with my big pressure washer, everything, I could do that same driveway in 30 minutes. So like, yes, in the beginning, like 
you're just worried about getting some money. You might not have a ton of money saved up. But as you start to book many jobs, that's the difference for me being able to do two jobs a day compared to 10 jobs a day or you know seven jobs a day, whatever it might be, where the money ends up paying itself back compoundly. And like I said, it looks more professional or you stay in someone's house forever and they're like, man, does this guy even know what he's doing or am I in and out? And they're like, holy hell, this guy is amazing. And then just to pull up with an actual fully set up trailer, like I have so many people that drive by and like, wow, heck of a rig, you got a business card. Like it just looks professional on the full setup. Um, with the big uh, eight and a half gallon machine, the one thing for whatever reason it didn't come with is a fuel tank. I ordered this off Amazon. Uh, I think it was like 30, 40 bucks, not bad at all. And then I have space for all of my different cleaners up here. Um, make sure you buy a bunch of these off Amazons for the actual water spigots. Have one run into your main water line, another one to the garden hose. Never, if you're running water to your pressure washer, make sure if you're actively using your pressure washer that you're not using, like someone isn't spraying weeds or bushes, you know, and then you're using the pressure washer because they're going to steal away from your gallons per minute and you can cause a lot of damage. Um, you obviously want to make sure you have extra gas on there. I personally, I bought these off Amazon. I think it was a package deal. They're not bad little electric package, Patrick, uh, package deal, <coughs> but I use this as a little leaf blower. Uh, I'll trim up some yards. They were like 150 bucks. I've used them. They've worked great. I plan on buying a backpack, um, uh, a backpack blower but uh, i have like different cords that run through the pressure washer through uh, my surface cleaner and then i lock everything up so i have that on all of my very expensive machines my boxes that have my batteries these batteries like i said are like 230 a piece so that's 500 dollars. people are thieves make sure your locks actually work a lot of people neglect stuff like that. If you buy a cheap box off Facebook and they don't work, you can replace these locks for $10, $15. Don't be lazy. Make sure you protect it because the day it happens, it's going to be a nightmare. So you want to make sure you're protecting yourself. Anything down to the protection of like when I when I have these, I actually have where I lock my, my trailer hitch. So not only do I have a regular trailer hitch ball, a trailer hitch ball I use, I then lock this part because realistically, if this isn't like a lot of people skip out when they buy these and they use a regular pin, if they can get this pin off, they can pull this collar and, and pretty much pry this ball out. But with the ball in and this locked in, there's no way to get it off. So there's different little things that you should be doing. Same with, uh, I, I just purchased a pin that goes through the actual ball hitch so they can't remove the ball hitch. When you got a lot of money wrapped up in your trailer, to spend an extra $50 at the head of it to make sure that it's protected from being stolen is huge. So a lot of this stuff, you know, you might not have known or you, know, you don't want to spend the money on. But you, what happens when you lose, lose a five ten thousand dollars trailer because you were lazy? You know, so don't do that type of stuff. Um, very important to do that. Hopefully with me rambling on forever of my trailer build, how I have it set up right now, that you learned a couple of things, maybe got a couple of different ideas. Please uh, let me know in the comments if you have any questions with anything I went over. I have about 80, 90 videos lined up, ready to go uh, that I'm currently filming on pretty much every aspect, how to hook up this, how to hook up this, why I chose that, why I chose that. Uh, I'm not perfect. I haven't been doing this for 20 years, but I've watched pretty much every video online. I've done hundreds of jobs at this point and I've learned a lot. But I still, it's not that I can't learn more. So if you guys have some helpful tips of watching this and, hey, why don't you try this out? I'd love to hear it. Uh, other than that, I hope you guys have a great rest of the day. Take care.